Let's get more on this. I'm joined now by Ross Feingold, an Asia political risk analyst who's in Taipei. Uh, and Ross, uh, China is accusing Britain of interfering with what it calls its own um, internal domestic matters. How far is this situation in Hong Kong causing tensions? Well, clearly it's now become more than just a Hong Kong issue or a Hong Kong China issue because the international community and most notably uh, countries with a significant interest in Hong Kong affairs are looking very closely at this. There are a lot of countries who have uh, uh, emigres from Hong Kong, companies that uh, are, are, have their Asia regional headquarters in Hong Kong with significant investment. These countries include the UK, obviously, but Canada, Australia, and of course the United States as well. So we have these governments as well as members of parliament, or in the case of the United States, the US Congress, who are looking very closely at this and in some cases are proposing taking uh, either legislative or executive branch action to show their displeasure with these events. Uh, and of course, you are in Taiwan. The foreign minister there says this, all of this just shows that this idea of one country, two systems is just a lie. Is that formula now being called into question? Well, it's certainly become discredited in the eyes of the people of Hong Kong. And this has been a, a pattern of developments going back many years where the central government has been seen as encroaching on the autonomy that people assumed Hong Kong would have under the terms of the basic law, which is typically uh, referred to as the mini constitution of Hong Kong, as well as the international agreement that the UK foreign minister referred to uh, earlier in the segment. Uh, so the, a number of actions that either the central government or the, the Hong Kong special administrative region government have taken, including with uh, how the chief executive is elected, how the members of the legislative council, popularly known as LegCo, are elected. Uh, there's been uh, purported kidnappings of people from Hong Kong into China, where they were prosecuted. So this pattern of issues has caused a, a popular resentment, and it was clearly uh, furthered by the proposed uh, extradition bill within the last few months that led to the recent protests. But I think we have to be careful here and, and, and watch where the line gets drawn between acceptable modes of popular protest and the violence that we saw that culminated in the invasion and destruction inside the Legislative Council chamber yesterday, and, and how much popular support will, will, will start to dissipate in Hong Kong for these protests. Right, and, and uh, you know, a lot of critics saying that was just a breakaway group. It wasn't the, the tone of the protest as a whole, but we now have China saying that, you know, th that those were serious criminal illegal acts and need to be investigated. Do you think China is now going to take the view that it might need to impose more control over Hong Kong? They might take a wait-and-see uh, view in the near term, and the reason for that is... Clearly, the Hong Kong government is going to prosecute anyone that they could identify who was involved in this violence, as they've already begun to do so with people who were arrested in the earlier protests in June, which, again, were, were overwhelmingly supported by the Hong Kong people. We know that. However, in cases where people did uh, engage in acts that the police felt were necessary to detain or arrest them, uh, the, the, the Hong Kong government's going to follow up. And I think we're going to see that uh, in the coming days, weeks, and months as well. And then we have to watch closely what kind of criminal charges the Hong Kong government pursues and what kind of jail sentences are eventually imposed, whether it's a rather liberal approach by judges or an extremely strict approach. Uh, and if that process plays out, it's very likely that the Chinese central government doesn't necessarily need to interfere with that process. What I think we're going to see is more along the lines of, of the remarks by the foreign ministry spokesman today, where they, where China, in the face of criticism or possibly legislative or other action by foreign governments, is going to take a very outspoken role in, in reminding foreign governments that this is an internal matter for China. And, and we'll have to see how that process plays out. But because the Hong Kong government doesn't conduct its own foreign relations. This is clearly within the scope of the central government, and they're going to push back very, very hard at any attempts by the foreign governments to take legislative or other action to show their displeasure with events in Hong Kong. Ross, thank you. Ross Feingold there in Taipei.